MTR, your secret recipe since 1924, presents A Kitchen Abroad. Satsriyakal. They say you can take a Punjabi out of Punjab, but you can't take the Punjab out of a Punjabi. You'll think what happened today at the evening. Nothing. Actually, I just got off a phone conversation with my mom and we discussed many things and of course food. And we were talking about the same thing too, that a lot of our tastes and preferences actually date back to our heritage and our grandparents. And thankfully, some family recipes were handed down generations and regrettably, sometimes they weren't. So that got me thinking that our traditions and our culture have a strong influence in our kitchen, especially the Punjabi kitchens. We love our food. And regrettably, sometimes us Punjabis love our food too much. So today, I decided I would share with you some of my family secrets, my Punjabi traditional meals that have been handed down generations. But of course, with a little bit of a special twist of mine. So to make our palak paneer malai kofta, we are going to use MTR Rasoi Magic Malai Kofta Mix and we're going to mix this into our koftas that we're going to make. And along with that, we're going to use MTR Rasoi Magic Methi Matar Malai and this is what we're going to make our gravy with. So we'll keep this aside because we'll make our gravy later. But right now, to make our malai kofta, we're going to use the paneer and I've crumbled up the paneer and to this paneer we are going to add I love these Rasoi Magic Mixes it gives me all the masalas I need in a quick teaspoon and that's it so in this I've put about three to four tablespoons of the masala and my koftas will also have some peas and these are just defrosted frozen peas I'm using a minted variety, but you can use a plain variety as well. The second half of our kofta mix, which is going to be inspired by the pakora side of Punjab, as well as the palak side of Punjab, is the outside of this kebab. So our kofta is going to have two parts to it, an inside part made of the paneer and an outside part which is going to be made of the saag, so the palak. So here I have some defrosted frozen spinach and you can use plain spinach or you can use the methi spinach, it's up to you. To this, I'm going to add three tablespoons of dry roasted chickpea flour. So I don't like to use the kacha chickpea flour, I like to dry roast it first because it makes sure that it has a nicer flavor. And regardless of the cooking time, you don't have to worry about the, um, the raw flavor of the basin. And to this, we'll also add a little bit of salt a little bit of pepper, a little bit of jeera powder or cumin powder and a little bit of dhania powder or coriander powder. Now we're going to mix this together and I'm going to use my hand because I want to make it into a nice dough and then this dough will become our casing that will hold together the paneer and then we'll fry it up really nicely. So this is how I want my dough to end up, which is into a nice tight ball. And what we're going to do is now use this to make small round balls out of this, which will become the outer casing for our kebab. With this mixture, you can make about uh, eight kebabs. So there we go, we've got the mixture into eight portions. And then we're going to get our paneer mixture and do the same. We also want to use this as the inside part. So just sometimes it helps if you add a little bit of chickpea flour into your paneer as well. Just about one tablespoon and that helps to bind it as well so that you can make your balls out of it. Make a nice ball with your paneer. Get your palak outer part and press it nice and flat and then take a small ball of the paneer and put it into the palak mixture and then case it around nicely. Slowly and gently just mold the outside to close it. There we go, we just slowly case it together and then use the chickpea flour that we have 
to lightly dust the outside so that it doesn't break when you put it into the oil and then put it into your hot oil to froth. So our palak paneer malai kofta ka jo malai gravy banane ke liye we're going to use MTR's Rasoi Magic methi matar malai mein. So let's just open up the packet. And you can already smell the malai and the sweetness of this gravy coming through. Put it into a mixing jug and in it add 2 cups of milk. And then just whisk it together. I'm whisking this so that there's no lumps in my gravy and when I cook my gravy it's actually going to cook nice and smoothly. Now you can put this jug straight into the microwave for about two minutes until your milk heats up and your gravy thickens or you can use your stove and cook the gravy for about five minutes till it thickens up. And because there's milk in that, just keep an eye on it to stir so that it doesn't fall down. आपने गोभी शलगम और गाजर का अचार का तो सुना होगा। And traditionally, achar has always been made as a means of preserving the vegetables, and the seasonal vegetables were used. My favorite and fondest recipe of gobi shalgam gajar ka achar dates back to my dadi ji, whom we lovingly used to call Mata ji. She used to make the best achar, and I'm sure you probably say the same about your grandparents as well. And achar traditionally jo banta hai, kaafi time lagta hai. And there are some achars that tend to have to soak up the sun and cook in the sun for many days and many weeks. And then there are some achars that are cooked and basically ready to eat. And me being the swad desi and daas pradesi type, chhat pat jo banta hai, that's my type. So thoda garam paani lijiye, we're going to blanch these vegetables. The vegetables are still going to stay al dente. So make sure that the water is not boiling, that the water is just has a little bit of ripples of bubble in it, uh, but not boiling. This basically says to you that the water is really hot, but I'm not going to cook my vegetables. I'm going to just blanch them until they're al dente. I have equal proportion of vegetables here. So up to you, if you have kitna banana. Right now I have 500 grams each. So this is about 1.5 kilos of achar that's going to be made. And just allow these vegetables that I have actually cut up into equal sizes so that they cook evenly. I can see that the water is rippling slightly. It's been about five minutes that it's uh, been in this tempering water. So once these vegetables have blanched, you just have to take them out and drain them in the colander. And then what we want to do is allow these vegetables to dry. And usually that drying process, like I said, is an overnight drying process. Ki aap, uh, you put it on a kitchen towel and then you put the vegetables on the kitchen towel and you leave it outside to dry overnight. But because I don't want to wait overnight, I'm actually going to put it in an oven tray and put it in the oven at 100 degrees for about an hour. At 100 degrees, you're not cooking the vegetables, you're just allowing the water to evaporate. So once your blanched vegetables have had the opportunity to dry up, we're going to make the masala. I'm waiting for mine to dry up in the oven and I'm going to turn my stove on and allow it to heat up before I put the mustard oil. Word of caution, when you do heat up the mustard oil, it smokes and it burns everybody's eyes and it stinks out the house. And I know that I use my burfi recipe to try and unite the family into the kitchen. 
This is one, if I want peace and quiet in the house, I do this because it gets everybody out of the house, including the dog. So let it uh, heat up the pan and put your mustard oil in. Once it heats up, we're going to put in our methi. And this is again uh, dry kasuri methi, which is a very staple Punjabi. You can hear the oil crinkling away, asking for you to put the kasuri methi in. So in goes the kasuri methi. And now we have to work really fast. So in that, I'm also going to put my ginger garlic paste and allow the methi and the ginger garlic to nicely brown up. Just use the back of your spatula to allow the ginger garlic paste to spread through the oil. The smell of the mustard oil is quite pungent now. And uh, again, like chaat masala, this is one of those things that uh, might smell bad, but my God, it tastes good. So, now we will use rye powder, which is mustard powder. So it's got a very nice uh, mustardy flavor and methi flavor. And it's usually when the combination of mustard powder and mustard oil that your eyes are going to start burning. And now to this, we add the haldi. And again, I'm putting the spices in the order of what takes the longest to sort of cook versus what is quick to cook. And iske baad hum dalenge apni lal mirch or red chili powder. And you can see it is so easy to make achar and I don't understand why we're so fearful of it. And now we're going to put the salt in. So achar takes quite a bit of salt, of course, because it's designed to preserve the vegetables. And again, the other preserving factor in the vegetables tends to be the vinegar. So we've got white vinegar here, which we're going to put in. And the combination of the vinegar and the brown sugar actually creates the additional liquid for our preservation of the achar. Normally the traditional achar has a lot more oil, but I don't like to have too much oil in my achar. Uh, but I need sufficient enough so that the achar can preserve well. I'm going to store my achar in the fridge. It, uh, you know, it stays for about six months quite well. In fact, it'll even stay for longer, but you do start getting a little bit of a smell in the achar. Um, of the old oil and just toss them through this oil mixture that we've created and then we're ready to just bottle up our achar and keep it in the fridge and serve it like I said you can serve it along with a nice cheese platter you can serve it along with a lovely bowl of dal and gobi alu ki sabzi and a nice paratha as well or you can just have it on a slice of bread and enjoy If I ask you to name me one dessert which is found in different parts of India, then what do you say? Of course, halwa. Halwa is served in many different variants and each tastier than the other. This is one dessert which is considered to be holy in properties. Because halwa is given to you in the place of the place of the place of the place. And today I'm going to share with you a dessert recipe. Halwa of course, but in a very different style. Halwa ke taur pe hum aaj banane wale hai ek halwa paratha pop. Kaafi alag kisim ka halwa jaysa meinne aapko bola. So we're going to warm up our wok aur pehle hum halwa banayenge. Usmein halwa ke liye humko chahiye ghi. Aur ismein kaafi ghi dalta hai relative to the way that I normally do cooking. This normally has about three quarters cup of ghi. And we're going to use one cup of plain flour to the three-quarter cup of ghee. And this halwa is a very special halwa because we're going to cook this halwa with the MTR badam drink. And by doing so, we actually end up getting all the flavors of the saffron and the lovely almonds as well. And the halwa becomes a really complete dish in one. And it's so quick and easy then. Now, in this halwa, we'll put the flour. In this ghee, we'll put the flour. And you'll notice कि ये काफी शुरू शुरू में काफी गीला गीला लगता है, which is fine and it's needed because we need to cook the atta in this ghee. और अब ये जो 
आटे का हलवा है इसमें एक और ट्रिक ये है दैट यू मस्ट इंश्योर दैट यू ब्राउन द आटा रियली वेल अभी अगर आप देखोगे तो इट्स अ वेरी मिल्की कॉफ़ी कंसिस्टेंसी एंड द कलर इज ऑफ दैट मिल्क कॉफ़ी कलर वॉट वी वॉन्ट टू डू इज अलाउ द कलर टू कुक अंटिल इट बिकम्स लाइक ए एक्सप्रेसो कलर एंड इट रियली ठोस अप आपको खुशबू भी आएगी इन फैक्ट यू नो हलवा इज समथिंग जो आटे का हलवा है इट्स सिनोनमस विद माई चाइल्ड हुड एंड इन फैक्ट आटा इज सिनोनमस विद पंजाबीज जब मैं छोटी होती थी तो गुरुद्वारे में हमको प्रसाद मिलता है विच इज़ आटे का हलवा एंड लाइक आई सेड अ लॉर ऑफ हलवाज आर हैव अ होली सिग्निफिकेंस और आई वॉज वन ऑफ दोज खेज हु वॉज अ नाइस चवी खेज जिसको अपना प्रसाद खाने का बहुत मज़ा आता था और बंगला साहब गुरुद्वारे हम लोग जाते थे इन दिल्ली और वहाँ पे मैं तो तीन चार बारी लाइन में लगती थी प्रसाद खाने के लिए अंटिल द भाई जी वो जस्ट गिव मी थ्री फोर सर्व्स ऑल एट वंस और कभी कभी तो मैं प्रसाद चढ़ाती थी लेकिन आई वुड नॉट टेक इट इन साइड द गुरुद्वारा क्योंकि वो आधा काट लेते थे मैं बाहर से ही निकल जाती थी अपना प्रसाद लेकर और आराम से खाती थी दी आज अ मेमरी दैर ऑफ कॉस्ट इज सनोनमस विद माई चाइल्ड हुड एंड विद आठा एंड विद माई ग्रैंड पेरेंट्स इज आर ऑफ पराठास आई मीन पराठास एंड पंजाबीज इज जस्ट अ मैच मेड इन हेवन और हम हर एक चीज़ का पराठा खाते हैं हम लोग आलू का खाते हैं गोभी का खाते हैं मूली का खाते हैं कीमे का खाते हैं बट टुडे वी गोइंग टू मेक अ हलवा का पराठा एंड दी अदर थिंग दैट इज सनोनमस विद माई चाइल्ड हुड इज पिन्नीस माई दादी जी यूज टू मेक द बेस्ट पिन्नीस पिन्नीस होती हैं आटे के लड्डू एंड इट्स अ विंटर डिश एंड आई यूज टू एब्सोलूटली अडोर दम तो आज जो ये रेसिपी है इट्स इंस्पायर्ड बाई ऑल थ्री and made into one so it's uh, going to look like a pinni and it's going to also be a paratha but at the same token it's going to have halwa so halwa paratha pop is what we're making so you can see that it takes about 15 minutes for this uh, to nicely toast up and to brown to the right color so don't skimp on this time kyunki kabhi kabhi lagta hai that you start getting that toasty smell and you think ye jalne wala hai no Don't focus on the smell. Focus on the color, because जो color आप अभी liquid जिस color में डाल दोगे, it'll actually stay at that color, and then it'll look very kacha kacha as well. And the consistency of the halwa will also be very kacha kacha. So allow it to toast up. So once your atta has toasted in the ghee in the dark brown color that you wanted to get to, which is like that espresso color, not black. but the really dark brown color then you add 3 cups of your mtr badam drink which is about 4 cans of the drink when you're mixing it into the atta just switch the heat off to start with and use a whisk and gently whisk the liquid into the atta to form a nice dough when your halwa is cooked now i'm going to add a little bit of sugar So have a taste if you feel that the sugar is fine for you then that's okay but I like to have a little bit more sweetness in this and just stir it through and again just cook this for like I said another 5 minutes and you can see that the ghee is already started to come out but it'll become into a nice shiny halwa and by using the MTR badam drink we'll actually get a very soft halwa that even when it's cold it'll still remain very soft to eat then leave your halwa aside to cool whilst we make the atta for the parathas and that's very easy my ratio of making paratha ka jo atta hai is 1 cup of atta to a third cup of warm water you mix it together and then try and get a nice tight dough you might need to sprinkle a little bit more water into the atta and add a little bit of a sprinkle of oil and get your dough nice and tight Whenever I'm uh, making atta I always smile and you know why because it reminds me of my husband's nani ji we used to call her badi mummy and badi mummy would sit there with the atta and actually make savia out of it it was amazing she would uh, roll it into this long sort of piece and then wo baitha 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 aise she would just twist and twist and twist till it became into these really thin pieces of savia and it's just an amazing art form but it's such a fond memory hum log us seviya itne shauk se khate the aur ab koi banata nahi hai unko so i always remember her whenever i'm making my atta then all you have to do is take small doughs small balls of your atta roll them out to make a round shape which is a small round shape use a melon baller which is the size of the inside halwa that we want to fill into this to make a nice round ball with the 
halwa and fill your paratha dough with the halwa to make into a nice round ball. That will be your pop shape. Now fry that ball in hot oil and a little bit like a kachori until it's nicely toasted and cooked on the outside. And then your halwa paratha pop is ready to serve. That's all I have time for today and I hope you enjoyed my secret Punjabi dishes from my family. And now they're in the public domain for all to see. But we'll see you next week and next week is our season finale so we have something special in store for you so please do come back. And until then please send me a message on a kitchenabroad.com or on my Facebook page and I look forward to replying to your messages and of course receiving them. And my secret special message for today, grandparents are a very special part of our memories. So please keep that memory alive by sharing our favorite generation old recipes and making sure that the next generations can also enjoy them too. See you next week. Till then, goodbye and take care. MTR, your secret recipe since 1924 presents A Kitchen Abroad.